And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Anytime you're talking about fundamentals in a market and direction, fundamentals take a little bit of time to play out. We got crude oil today, kind of trading yesterday's value area really nicely, low to high. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trading routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. Good morning and welcome to the Market Forecast. You caught me uh, taking care of a little housework here. Uh, welcome everyone. It's Wednesday, September the 1st already. Amazing, right? This year seems to be flying by. As always, thanks for joining me. My name is John Hoagland and I'm happy to be here with you. I'm also going to be with you today for group coaching as well as the uh, recap today. So Dan's going to be a little busy. I'll be happy to join you for the recap. I'm going to put the link in for group coaching, which is today at 11 o'clock Central Time. Go ahead and register, and we've got some really a couple of really good questions already. Uh, Fred Decker always puts in uh, really interesting thoughts, ideas, and uh, and uh, real time. Well, I mean, it was questions that he had in real time that we're going to review. Uh, on the uh, the group coaching today, so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good one. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, as far as today, <laughs> we're looking for context, always context, and always thinking about risk management first. Anytime I think about a trade, think about taking a trade. First thing in my mind is how much is this going to cost if it does not go my way, and I have to accept that right away. Uh, and then, of course, we're always looking for infinite patience. This morning's economic numbers came out. Uh, the ADP employment number, they were looking for an additional 613,000 jobs created, only 374,000 jobs. So there's a little bit of a, perhaps a foreshadowing of what's going to happen for the rest of the week with the, inf- with the uh, employment numbers that we do have coming out. We're still 8.45 p.m. waiting for the PMI manufacturing final uh, 9 o'clock Central, ISM Manufacturing Index and Construction Spending. So not only did we get a look at the unemployment or employment situation, at least the beginning of it, um, we're going st- to see some possible inflationary numbers coming out here uh, as the day goes on. Markets are already somewhat reacting. Uh, but biggest reaction uh, to the uh, ADP number I saw was, Gold currencies and the treasuries. Not too much reaction so far in the equities that I've been able to see so far, but I'm sure we'll be, we'll be digesting that information as the day goes on. As far as equities are concerned, they are st- they are set to open higher today, um, as the rest of the week uh, promises a clear, a more clear picture of the employment numbers and the employment situation. Today's ADP number, I feel, is uh, probably just a little bit of a snack. We'll be eating more tomorrow and Friday. Uh, OPEC and uh, OPEC Plus, OPEC and Friends, is set to meet in Vienna later. Expectations they're going to stick to current uh, um, production numbers, sticking with that additional 400,000 barrels per day. And crude oil is just kind of settling in here. Um, SEC has warned also that uh, cryptocurrencies will need to accept tougher regulation. Too large and not properly governed is what the uh, head of the SEC is saying. So uh, didn't see much reaction in Bitcoin on that this morning, but uh, that's something that I'm sure we'll be uh, discussing and and, uh, looking at as time goes on. As always, make sure you hit that lucky like button. Make sure you share, comment, question, feedback, and heckling are always welcome. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can get notified when we do go live. A brief look into the VIX, the dollar index, and the 10-year yield. VIX down 16.12, down 2% this morning. The dollar index uh, coming off uh, 
earlier highs to basically settlement uh, 92.50 and the 10-year yield 1.3%, still holding there, uh, taking, a, a, again, a little bit of a dive to the downside after the ADP numbers came out, and you can you, you can see it in the Treasury prices. We're going to see that very shortly. As always, got to say good morning to everybody. Rob T., good to see you. First in the room, you win the prize. Edelson, Jorg, uh, G- uh, Charles, Brett, Brian, Caesar, John, uh, Vince, good to see you. Bill, Ryan Williams, Clarence, Tim, uh, Joseph, the future scalper, Tone, a- a- Andres, uh, Zorin, dead letter opener, uh, Janus, Laura, good to see you, Prophet Eon, it's good to see you too, and I'm currently uh, getting dressed for the for morning for a workout. Good morning, uh, Jason, good to see you for the journey. Good to see you, journey. Uh, Km, you. Yes, you do a mean recap, Mr. Hogan. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll we'll review what we looked at this morning. We'll see how the markets traded out to, throughout the day, and we take a look at some interesting uh, facts from the past and, and some musical facts. I always like to add that in there. Maybe today I'll, I'll go way back when we used to do the recap. I always used to do a dad joke. Maybe we'll even do a dad joke to see how things go today. As always, say a prayer for everybody in, in world, and for world peace. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the charts here. Uh, get everything set up. Take a sip of my coffee. My dad always called it Norwegian gas. Uh, good morning, Cameron, JB, Ainge. Harry, good to see you. Trading research, always a pleasure. So let's jump into the charts. As always... Just going left to right, no particular order. Everybody knows the rules, one bite each. And here's the crude daily chart. Okay, the API yesterday announced a 4 million barrel draw. The EIA is looking for a 3 million barrel draw this morning, which is exactly what the API was looking at yesterday. So a little bit of uh, supply. Doesn't really seem to be pushing price any, any higher right now. We are, I'm sure, of course, waiting for the 930 number here with the EIA. Uh, it seems to be continuing to struggle up against weekly kickoff high here. 68, excuse me, 69.80 is weekly kickoff high. Monday, we took our closest look at it. We've been kind of coming off ever since. Starting to perhaps look a little bit like a bull flag. Uh, Monday's uh, extended trading hours are so far the weekly range. We have not left Monday's range all week. It's only Wednesday. It's going to change, but it's been a pretty range-bound week so far. Let's take a look at the 30. So here's the range from from uh, Sunday night, actually, is where this whole range came from. We've been inside that the entire time. We were looking at the, uh, at the market as a kind of a coiling market. We... Lost 3,900 in open interest yesterday, so no real big energy coming in on that uh, on that number. But we see that the market has now broken out of the bottom channel here of this kind of triangle that we've got. Uh, we've now gone down and checked in regular trading hours this naked point of control down here. There's still lots to look at down here as far as Naked points of control. We've got a little bit of a gap here. If this market starts to grow some legs, those will be visual targets for traders. And we know that traders are very visual. And uh, the what they are looking at, they bring price to. So we've got a pretty decent move off the uh, open here. It looks like the opening range may even be the high of the session, so that's going to keep me looking for opportunities to sell strength during during the day today until that gets taken out. So we're going to we're going to see some volume starting to uh, accumulate down here. That's going to also be telling me that we may be accepting lower prices. My in my notes this morning before the numbers came out, I was looking to fade the extremes of this and 
go with breakouts after acceptance. Do Is this acceptance? Are we spending some time? Are we building some volume? We certainly have a little bit of momentum to the downside here. We can't hold this naked point of control. There's plenty of space down below for this market to continue to drive. It is EIA day, so we're waiting for information. So I'm thinking that our best opportunities may come after the EIA, even though we seem to be in a breakout situation and a continue and a possible continuation situation. So got to watch what the EIA says. If the, if the EIA comes out and says, you know, there was an eight million barrel draw. You know, that's going to change this whole situation. So while this is an early opportunity, I don't think that I'm going to be crying like I've missed something. Uh, because I think there's going to be some opportunities after EIA as well. So this morning's early thought was fading the extremes and going with breakouts outside of this triangle formation. And the... S&Ps. So equities are now officially entering rollover. Uh, switch day will be a week from tomorrow. Uh, next Thursday will be switch day, which means Friday we'll be trading Christmas S&Ps, December S&Ps. We've got to remember that it isn't in, in coming into rollover, and that may create more range-bound activity as our bigger, longer time frame traders work to move those 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 contracts from the September into the December contract. Um, they are um, going to be trying to get that cheap roll, you know. And you have to when you have to roll a whole bunch of contracts over if you can get it done either on the bid or on the offer, depending on which way you have to do it. You can save yourself a ticket contract. And if you're mo moving 10,000 contracts, you're saving yourself $125,000 by doing it that way. They will also leg the spread. They'll get out of one and then work their way into the next contract. So there's a lot of energy it takes to, uh, to complete and succeed in a cheap rollover for some of our longer time frame traders. Yesterday, uh, overlapping to higher range, testing weekly kickoff high. We added 6,300 in open interest on higher volume. The upside auction still appears to be relatively healthy. Uh, we have, we yesterday it was very difficult to read Delta, but by the end of the session, it was relatively apparent that we had some sneaky longer time frame buyers at least suspected in yesterday's activity. Uh, take a look at the 30-minute chart here. Mm -mm. All right. So... We still have our all-time high in the in the overnight session. Market's not going to definitely not going to like that too much. We have settlement down here at forty-five twenty fifty. Put that on your charts. We've got some overnight longs that already seem to be reconciling. There is the possibility that we may open with a gap, and if we can't close the gap, we'll look for opportunities in the direction of the gap, which has us looking for move to the upside to weekly kickoff high to perhaps take out the all-time high that occurred in the overnight session. We know markets don't like to do that. They don't like to leave that in regular trading hour session. Um, so we have, you know, some, some pretty substantial and overnight longs against a and in, in a longer term important inflection level like this weekly kickoff high here. So we uh, we are going to be uh, in, I was kind of expecting a, a an inventory adjustment to give me the opportunity to perhaps buy at a better trade location. Again, I'll be watching to see if we open with a gap, if we open with a gap and can't close it, it might push me into uh, looking for that as an opportunity to look for a long to go back up and retest that that high here as well as the overnight all-time high. 
What I don't want to really see is I don't want to see a gap close and then start spending time inside yesterday's range and value because that's going to kind of slow things down a bit for me, if you will. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, rem to remember to show you on the TPO charts here I don't have the regular trading, the the extended trading hour sessions on here, but Monday we had an unfinished upside auction at the high of the regular trading hour session. Yesterday we have a very unfinished upside auction on the highs of yesterday's activity. So we are. And not only that, let's see, last night had, a, had a, a week high. From what I remember, it may have changed by now. And then the night before that had an unfinished upside auction. What I mean by an unfinished upside auction is the market has spent too much time up here. There's no um, evidence of excess where price got too expensive and was rejected quickly. Again, up here, the market traded up here a dozen, well, let's say, let's call it five or six, four or five times without leaving any form of excess. We're trading above it right now. <coughs> so it looks like we are going to open with a gap. <coughs> At yesterday's low, we have excess. We have a single line of TPOs where price got too cheap and it was quickly rejected. Monday. The market opened here and rejected immediately. This is excess. Excess, no excess at the highs indicates that the upside auction may not yet be over. Think about that. All right. NASDAQ, same but different. We didn't have the uh, unfinished upside auctions that we did in the S&Ps, but we're still holding upside structure. Volume was a little bit higher yesterday. We added 2300 in open interest yesterday, which is a good thing. Uh, res week weekly kickoff resistance might be in play today, and it is, as of yet, truly unchecked. We've got an inside extended trading hour range today. Um, it's going to kind of maybe, maybe make me be a little patient here. Let's see what we're looking at on the 30-minute chart. Uh, so... Again, similar but different. Uh, our weekly kickoff level is a, is a little bit higher in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has been presenting as a stronger market. So this is an area where I'm, I'm thinking that longer time frame traders will be forced to adjust inventories. As far as our inventory from last night, we're holding some longs. Looks like we're going to be opening with a gap. Yep, dead letter opener. Poor highs. You got that right. Um, so similar but different. We got a little bit more space to go before we get to a, to a you know real inflection level. Our all time high again in the overnight session. Markets don't like that. Settlement down here is fifteen five eighty two fifty. Put that on your charts. Mar the market trading just barely through it. Most of it's been moving higher, indicating a higher uh, a, a a long overnight weaker hands inventory. We can't close this gap this morning. That's going to say all right. When we can't close this gap, we're going to be looking to go in the direction of the gap, which puts us to the all-time high that happened a couple of nights ago, and above that, the weekly kickoff high. If we do go back and accept back in yesterday's area of value, that's going to change things a little bit. And, uh, and if I'm thinking in a longer term, I'll, be have, I'll have the opportunity to look for longs on weakness, perhaps down near yesterday's value area low. Value area special situation opens out of range, accepts back inside value from the previous day, high probability of a move back to the low of the value area of the previous day. It's a tricky, it's a tricky trade. Sometimes they make it easy. Most of the time they don't. It may not even come to play today. If we can't close the gap or find any acceptance inside value from yesterday, we're not going to have to worry about it. What is acceptance? Hmm, very subjective. 
very subjective. Some say if you have two 30-minute bars that get into value at all, that marks acceptance. I've always thought acceptance is two 30-minute bars closing back inside of value is a, is a better gauge, but sometimes it'll happen too fast for that. So you really have to be nimble looking at the value area special situation play. Uh, in gold, this has been an extremely organized upside structure. Once we put in the low here, we've got b bull flag and another bull flag. And are we putting in another bull flag? It's like it's like making stairs for the market to continue to step higher. Um, so this organized upside structure is good. Yesterday we added 5,300 in open interest. Volume is okay, not tremendous. It was an overlapping to lower day, but directionally it ended up being a, a move to the upside. Bull flag after bull flag. Take a look at the 30-minute chart. So this all happened after the API um, API number came out. Okay, uh, the market opened, left the opening range at the high of the session, took out the the, the high of the opening range, uh, and, and drove higher. What we're looking for is, or would be, acceptance above this upper line of the of the potential bull flag. We took a good look at it. So far, we're seeing some rejection. We're seeing some return back into value after an attempt to reject value. Uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be an interesting day. It's gonna be a challenging one here. Um, you know, we have last week's high, which is pretty much where the market traded to. Visually, that's a that's a good thing. Uh, we do have kind of a poor high here. Uh, you know, it's looking like there's one little TPO hanging out the top of the of the previous bar here. So that's that's indicating what we were just talking about. It's indicating an unfinished upside auction. Be cautious. Uh, there's a little bit of volatility here this morning. Um, you know, I'm I'm back in value today. I haven't done anything in gold. Back in value. I'm gonna try and stay patient. I think that our Real opportunities are going to come if we can get a retest of this unfinished upside auction here or a test back down to point of control or even value low from yesterday. We have our 1807 to 1809 zone that we've been looking at as support, which would give us that opportunity down near low of value to use that as a, as a potential risk limiter. It is a 20 tick range. A little bit bigger risk than I'm used to taking in gold, but it again may provide a, a decent opportunity. All right, I, I keep getting a little bit long winded here. And here's the euro. Euro currencies, uh, for your information, are also in rollover. Roll switch day is is again a week from Thursday for the currencies as well. Got to keep an eye on that. Um, medium time frame structure is still good to the upside. We are pushing up against an important inflection level, the weekly kickoff high, exactly one eighteen forty six. So we have you know a, a, we tested it yesterday in the overnight. We're testing it now in the regular trading hour session. Uh, I believe that this um, move yesterday to the upside uh, had some hints of longer time frame buyers in it. In other words, I, perhaps a preemption of a breakout to the upside above this level. It's going to be interesting. Um, I'm looking for another test of that weekly kickoff high, which we are currently doing. Uh, it, what are we looking at here? Okay, this morning before the numbers came out, we were no overnight inventory. The, the market opened and drove higher. It uh, did not leave necessarily the opening range at the low of the session. It looked lower. Now is looking higher. This is a good opportunity. There's some fish up here, folks. There's some fish. Um. You know, we, 
we've got yesterday's high. We've got an important inflection level. I'm looking for fish up here. If we if we can't accept above it, we'll be looking to go short to return back to value from yesterday. If we find some new business above this level, don't fight it. Don't fight it. There, there could be a potentially decent move to the upside. Uh, Saeed, I see your question. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go to Drawing Tools. I'm going to click on Volume Profile, and I'm not going to hold it. I'm just going to click it and let it go. Then I come over here to where I want my profile to start, and I click, let it go, and then drag to the right, and it will, it will populate your your uh, your volume profile okay now on a day like whoops on a day like yesterday I can I can stop the volume profile at the end of the trading session just by pushing it back and then it'll it'll populate like this if I leave it like this it's going to populate on the right hand side and continue to populate so you're going to want to take that left edge move it to where your close is and then you're going to be able to have all these profiles like that all right um so I think we were done with the 6e and Saeed you can always come to the group coaching session at one o'clock and we can get a lot deeper into some of the properties of the volume profile and the TPO profiles on the TS Trader. Okay. Uh, the 10 year uh, rollover is expiring. We're still very short time frame controlled here, centrally located in a weekly kickoff range. Um, you know, I, to me, this market's been a little bit off the radar. Take a look at the 30-minute chart here. Now, this all happened right after the ADP number came out. And, you know, we were looking at a potential gap. Well, the gap closed. The gap, I mean, this market just ran through value, ran higher. Um, as the rates got kind of cracked because of ADP, of course, price goes higher. It's hard to predict these things. You don't want to get stuck against them. So we're we'll always be thinking about your risk. As far as risk is concerned today, to the upside, I would say there may be some fish up against last week's high and yesterday's range high, but only because I can limit my risk. Again, somewhat off the radar. It's in it's in range, opening out of range, ran right through value and is currently still in range, but perhaps approaching an interesting level above. Uh, do I hold those sessions on YouTube? No, they are on Zoom. That link that I put in, uh, Saeed, um, just above your last comments here, are an invite to it. So it's done on YouTube and webinar forum. Uh, and you can just type in, type in questions. How do you make the profiles look that way? How do I, you know, how do I add the, the TPO charts? All those questions are, 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 you know, welcome. And, and if I can answer them, I'm going to answer them. Um, so could the crude sell off be long liquidation? Absolutely, Fred. You know, we've, 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 we had a 10% move to the upside last week. The market's been having trouble even approaching an important resistance level. That's important. Thank you, Fred. Thank you for letting Saeed know that. Uh, Louis. Luis Garcia, come to the group coaching session. It's today at 1 p.m. Central. Uh, NM, you get my email when you sign up for the group coaching. Ryan, the, again, the uh, volume profile is under drawing tools. And Tim... You, you got questions on the volume profile again. Come to the group coaching session. Come to the group coaching session. It is 
My favorite time of the of the of the week is Wednesdays because I get to spend a lot of time with traders talking about trading. I don't know everything, ladies and gentlemen. It's one of the things I love about it is I think I learn as much from you as you might learn from me. And I look forward to seeing you there. We've gone a little bit long-winded again today. My apologies for that. I'm going to take my deep breath. Stay calm, cool, collected, humble, grateful, and creative in my trading today. I'm hoping the same for you. Hope you have a good trading day. Uh, I will see you for group coaching at 1. I will be back with you at 3 o'clock for the market recap. Hope you have a great trading day. Now, clear your mind. Get your feet on the get your feet on the ground. Let the market tell you what it's going to do and respond appropriately. Always be patient and exercise good risk management. Get out there and prosper. Trade well today. I'll see you in the pit, and I'll see you later on. Have a great day.